Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Hobbymate H6 ACDC Smart Charger. This relatively small device packs some really interesting features. It can be powered either using AC or DC inputs. It supports many types of batteries and will enable you to charge up to 6S LiPo batteries. Its maximum discharge current is 5 amperes and it features a 2.4 inch color screen. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the charger, you're getting a small card with the specifications of the product and an AC cable with either British, Australian, European or American plug. On the top side of the charger, you can find a vivid 2.4 inch color LCD screen and three capacitive buttons that will enable you to navigate through the menus and operate the charger. On its back side, you can find a micro USB port that will enable you to update the firmware of the charger an AC input that supports between 100 and 240 volts, so you can practically use this charger all around the world, an XT60 DC input that supports between 6.5 to 30 volts, so you can power up the charger using LiPo batteries between 2 to 7 cells. In addition, you can also find a servo connector for testing servos and radio receivers. On the left side of the charger, you can find an XT60 battery connector, a balance port that supports up to 6 cells and a USB port for charging your peripheral devices. On the right side you can find a ventilation hole and a fan for keeping the charger cool. And finally on the bottom you can find rubber legs for keeping the charger steady. Now I've got the charger powered up using AC and I also connected a 4S battery to the charging ports. On the main screen you can see the voltage of the connected battery, the voltage of each cell and if you scroll down, you can see the input voltage, the internal temperature of the charger, the total milliwatt hour that the battery was charged with, and the total number of batteries that were charged using this charger. Navigating through the menus and operating the charger are done using the up, OK, and down capacitive buttons. In order to enter the main menu, you will need to long press the OK button, and then over here, you can enter different submenus. Pressing the down and up buttons will enable you to navigate through the menus and in order to enter the submenu, you need to press the OK button which also double acts as a back button after long pressing it. Now let's quickly go over the options. First of all, you can set the task parameters and under this submenu, you can set the safety timer, the maximum capacity, the end current and you can turn on and off trickle charging. Next, you can set the system parameters and over here you can set the language. So you can set it between the following options. You can set the regenerative discharge, which is an option that allows you to charge back the connected battery that powers up the charger while discharging the battery which is connected to the charging port. So over here you can set the maximum current, maximum voltage and the maximum power. Next, you can set the maximum input power. It goes all the way up to 750 watts and all the way down to 50 watts. Next, you can set the minimum input voltage, which is a very important option if you regularly use the DC input. The minimum value is 6.5 volts and it goes all the way up to 27 volts. In case you normally use a 4S battery, I recommend to set this value to 14 volts. Next, you can set the LCD backlight, so you can set it to high, middle, and low. You can set the volume, which is right now set to off, so you can set it to low, middle, and high. You can set the completion signal, which indicates that the charger finished charging a battery, either to repeat or single. And you can set the device name. Next, under tools, you can take advantage of the server port, which is located on the back side of the charger. So over here, you can perform a PWM measurement. You can test servers either manually or automatically. And you also have a PPM out option. Next, I can perform a calibration, which you will first need to unlock. And then you can individually adjust the voltage of each cell, adjust the input voltage, and also adjust the output voltage. After unlocking the calibration when you once, you won't have to do it again. 
Next, you can perform a system self-checking and before pressing OK, make sure that you disconnected the battery. You can also restore all the settings to the factory settings. And finally, you can access the system information. Pressing the OK button while you are at the main screen will take you to the task settings menu. Over here, first of all, you can select the task that you would like to perform. So you can choose between the following options. First, you can set the charger as a power supply, and then you can set the output voltage between five volts all the way up to 24 volts. You can also set the output power between 700 watts all the way down to 20 watts. You should remember that when powered on AC, the maximum output power is 200 watts, and when powered on DC, the maximum output power is 700 watts. Then press OK to start the task, and of course you should do it without a battery connected to the charging ports. The next option is to charge a battery, which is probably the most useful feature. Over here you can set the battery type between these options. You can set the end cell voltage, the battery cell count, which is automatically discovered when you plug the balance connector of the battery. You can of course adjust the current setting, which goes all the way down to 0.1 amperes and all the way up to 26 amperes. And finally, you can start the task. After the battery is going to be charged for about 10 seconds, you'll be able to monitor the resistance of each cell. And in order to do that, you'll need to press the down arrow and the information is going to be shown over here. If you'd like to stop the charging procedure, press OK and then press OK again. The next task is discharge. These options are very similar to the charge options and you can set the end cell voltage depending on the battery type that you choose. The current setting can go all the way down to 0.1 ampere and all the way up to 5 amperes, which is a very impressive feature. So let's start the task and see if it will get to 5 amperes. Now the fan kicked in. And as you can see, when connected through AC, it will only get to about 0.9 amperes. So let's try using DC. And as you can see, even on DC, I'm getting the same results. The next option is external discharge, which will only be available once the charger is powered through DC. Selecting this option will enable you to discharge the battery that powers the charger. And in order to do that, you will need to connect a resistive load to the charging port. Over here, the current can be higher than before, so it goes all the way down to 1 ampere and all the way up to 15 amperes, but you have to remember that the resistive load that you are going to connect the charging port will need to support it. The next options are storage and balance, and these options only differ in the cell voltage. On storage mode, you can set the cell voltage, for example, on LiPo to in between 3.7 up to 3.9 volts. And when you select balance, you can set the cell voltage all the way down to 3.2 volts and all the way up to 4.25 volts. Finally, the last option is regenerative discharge. Selecting this option will enable you to discharge a battery which is connected to the charging port and then use this energy in order to charge the battery that powers the charger. So let's start it up. Now, as you can see, the voltage of the battery which powers the charger is 15.19 volts. And as you can see, it goes up. Let's adjust the current setting and put it all the way up to 26 ampere. And as you can see, the battery is being discharged at a very impressive rate. And now I'm going to stop the discharging procedure because I recommend to use a bigger battery in order to do that because I'm using only a 1500 mAh forest battery but if I would have powered this charger for example using a 10 ampere battery discharging this battery at a current rate of 20 amperes wouldn't be an issue. So overall I think that the Hobbymate Speed H6 charger packs some really interesting and advanced features. The only question that you should ask yourself if you need all these features and if you're looking for an AC-DC charger that does all of that, priced at around $90, it will give you a good value for your money. Now before getting this charger, 
and actually any charger, you should ask yourself whether you need all these functions. Because for example, if you charge your batteries mostly at home, probably going for the ISDT D2, which costs only $10 extra, will be a better option. And of course, you also have the excellent Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro, which is my daily charger, which performs great and will enable you to charge two batteries simultaneously, both at home and on the go. So that's going to be it for this video. And of course, if you have any questions about the Hobbymate Speed H6 charger, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.